If you want to become a hireable front-end developer today, Redux is the most essential skill along with React.js. And this is the only video that you will need to learn Redux end-to-end. -end. So Redux is a JavaScript library for predictable and maintainable global state management. So the keyword over here is state management. So a lot of time it happens that when we are creating an application and we have to pass a prop from one component to another and let's say if you want to pass the same data to another prop, we would again have to pass the data through the props and this create a vicious cycle that is called as prop drilling. And to avoid such a situation, we have a Redux library. And in this video, we will be learning Redux by creating this habit tracker application where we can enter some uh, habit like let's say create video and we can set the frequency let's say weekly and click on add habit now it has added this habit over here and each week we can click on mark complete when we are done with that particular task and it will create this streak right over here and we can see the statistics here as well that the total number of habits that we have what have we completed today and what is our longest streak for a particular habit so it will look something like this and this will give you an idea on how redux works behind the scenes as well Right, so let's say we have an initial state called habits, which is an empty array, right? Because we will have multiple different habits inside of it. So Redux contains a few things. Number one is a store. So a store is where the state lives. So this habits state is inside of this store. And if we want to change this particular state, we have to use something called as actions and reducers in Redux. And why do we need both of these actions and reducers? It's because we cannot directly mutate our state inside of Redux. These, this state is immutable. So let's say when user clicks on this add habit button, there's this add habit action that is dispatched from over here, from our React app, which contains the name of our habit and the frequency that is daily in this case, right? And this action looks something like this. It has two things, the type, which is add habit in this case, and a payload which contains the data which is going to be added. Now this payload can be empty as well, depending on the action. So this action is triggered that we are supposed to add a habit and it contains this data of the habit to be added, right? Now we have created a reducer over here, which is this add habit reducer, right? This is triggered when we want to, you know, manipulate something inside of our state. So what this will basically do is it will create a copy of our current state and it will push this particular habit inside of that copied state. And then after that, it will overlap our previous state, right? So we did not directly manipulated our state. So currently our state will look something like this. And this cycle goes on. If user adds a habit, it will trigger this function again. Like for example, in this app, we have this toggle habit action as well. This is a separate action. When we click on mark complete, that triggers a toggle habit and it toggles or changes that particular uh, you know element inside of the state if we have this remove uh, button over here when we click on it it triggers a remove state element as well right so this is the basic flow of how redux works behind the scenes so cool let's go on and create our habit tracker application using react.js and redux as a state management library but before that redux toolkit is also very important for our interviews as well and I've covered a lot of interview questions on Redux Toolkit, like for example, building a shopping card app using Redux Toolkit, which is asked in our interviews a lot, and a lot of frequently asked interview questions on Redux as well, right? So this is part of my front-end interview preparation course. This is the only thing that you will ever need to prepare for your front-end interviews. And not only this, I've covered every single topic of React.js, like React Router DOM, Redux, all of the hooks, class-based component, function-based component React, even the performance optimization, which is asked from senior developers a lot, tons of machine coding questions as well, and obviously in-depth interview preparation course on JavaScript as well. And not just this, along with this course, you get an active Discord community where you can ask your doubts whenever you get stuck and we will be there to help you. So click the link in the description down below because right now we're having the biggest sale of the year for a very limited time. So don't forget to check it out. Or you can also scan this QR code on your screen to go directly to the course page. So I've opened VS Code over here and I'll open my terminal and I'll say npm create wheat at latest. Now it will ask us the project name. So I'll just press dot over here so that it creates the project right here. I'll choose React and TypeScript. So there we go. It has 
initialized a brand new react app right here i'll say npm install to install all of the dependencies that are inside of this package.json file right here so let's wait cool this has installed now for styling our application we will be using something called as material ui in this video so i'll just go to material ui's documentation you you guys might have used it before it's very simple to work with it's a ui library click on get started and go to installation and we have to install these three things so click on copy over here and paste it right here over here right so how material ui basically works is let's say if we click on this components if we want to add a button inside of our app right what we do we just have to add this particular line and it will create this beautiful button right over here now it takes a few variants as well like depending on the type of button that we want to make i'll, I'll tell you everything don't worry about it okay so material ui has finished installing great let's go on and install redux now so i'll go and search react redux and this is the official documentation for react redux click on get started so click on quick start right here and if you scroll down you're going to see it tells us to install redux toolkit and react redux because redux toolkit nowadays is the standard way of writing redux right so i'm going to copy this up and paste it right here press enter so this will install redux inside of our application by the way one more thing i forgot to install material ui icons as well so uh, yeah right here npm install at mui slash icons dash material because we, we're going to be needing some icons as well inside of our app right so you can see something like this so we will install this icons package as well okay so it has finished installing let's do npm run dev and run our application there we go our app is running smoothly let's go on and remove the things that we are not going to be needing like this assets folder everything inside of app.css everything inside of index.css and inside of app.tsx i'm going to remove everything inside of return have a dev which will say subscribe to roadside coder which you should if you haven't yet let's remove this state and all of these imports as well great so if i go back now yeah we can see subscribe to roadside coder so as i mentioned before we have something called as store inside of our application right which is basically responsible for the data flow inside of our app all of this action reduces and everything so how do we create a store so if we go back to the docs we have to create a file named store.js right so i'll just um, create a folder right over here called store and i'll actually create a folder called components for all of our react components so inside this store i'll create a new file called store.ts and as they've mentioned we would need something called as configure store from redux js toolkit so okay let's just take this and paste it right here and we will import it from redux js slash toolkit now you can see we have this reducer defined right over here now an app can have multiple different reducers as well defined on the use case like for example for our habit tracker application we will create just one reducer for managing all of the habits let's say if an app had multiple different things like tracking habits tracking expenses so we would have created a separate reducer for expenses separate reducer for habits right okay now you can see it tells us to provide the redux store to react now if we want to use redux inside of our application our app has to know that we are using redux right so if we go right over here app.tsx we have to wrap whole of our app with something called as provider right and this provider will also come from react redux so let's put it inside of the div and this provider takes the store as a prop right so it has this store prop and it will take this particular store that we have created right here so i'll say store and we will import it from dot slash store slash store something like this great now how do we go on and create the reducer for our app so if we go inside of this store right over here we'll create another file called habit slice dot ts so what is this slice so basically before redux toolkit there was a different way of writing redux using the core redux library right and that required a lot of boilerplate code lot of unnecessary code which could have been avoided and was avoided when the redux toolkit was introduced so basically slice is something that manages everything for us 
from our states to our reducers inside of this single function called create slice so right over here you can see they've given this same very simple counter example which has the initial state of value equals zero and inside of this they have created multiple different reducer increment decrement and increment by amount etc right so we can define all of our reducers over here earlier we need to define our offer it here separately and all of our actions separately as well and you can see we can export all of our actions just like this and we can do export default counter slice dot reducer and that's this reducer is what we will be importing right over here inside of store dot j uh, store dot ts don't worry you will get to know everything as we go on and build this application even more also by the way if you're someone who want to learn the older way of writing redux I have created multiple different courses in the past like this Mern stack course completely free on YouTube and this dedicated Redux video as well, right? So you can go and check out these uh, videos. So cool, let's go on and create this slice. So over here, I'll say const habit slice equals create slice. And this will be imported from Redux JS slash toolkit. Inside of it, as we saw, we have a function. You can see multiple different options over here. First of all, what is the name of this slice? It's going to be habits. Then we will have the initial state, right? We need to define an initial state right over here. Let's just define it here. So const initial state equals, and we need to define the types for this initial state as well, right? So for every single habit, we will have these things. We will uh, define this interface right here called habit. It will have an ID of string, a name, frequency with which can either be daily or weekly it will have the completed dates like array of completed dates inside of this key and when this habit was created right so this will be of type string so then we can take this habit and create another interface actually for habit habit state and here we will have a habits array which will contain habit the array of habits right so this is what is going to be the type of our initial state so i'll say colon and habit state all right this looks good let's add the initial data so it will be simple just habits and the empty array just like we discussed right over here in this diagram all right now apart from this we're gonna have a reducers object over here as well which will contain all of our actions just like i showed you earlier right so for our habit tracking uh, application we will have multiple different uh, like actions like add habit uh, remove habit toggle habit etc we will discuss them one by one let's just export this so export const and whatever actions that we will be writing inside of it we will be exporting it through here like if i say add habit i'll take it out from habit slice dot actions right so this obviously doesn't exist yet i'll just uh, add a dummy function right here for now let's export our uh, reducer as well so i'll say habit slice dot reducer and i'll just say export default habit slice dot reducer great so this is all you need to do to set it up the only thing that's remaining now is just to import this reducer over here so inside this reducer object i'll say habits and i'll say habits reducer so let's just um, import it import habit reducer from dot slash habit slice great and if you go back to our app nothing has changed because we haven't added any logic related to redux now one thing that i would like to do first of all is to install something called as redux dev tool extension right so this basically is something which will help you to see how redux is working inside of our browser so just click on install in your case you will see an install button I've already installed it, so I don't need to do it again. So I'll just close it now. And then you will see this Redux toolkit icon right over here glowing green. Just right click and click on inspect and go over here to Redux. Now here, as soon as your uh, store is initialized, you will start to see it. Uh, okay, I'll just refresh it. Yep, you can see we have this habits reducer right over here and you can see the states changing in real time. We will come back to this again. Let's just start building our app first. Also, since we are using TypeScript right here, we need to uh, export two things from this uh, store.ts. One is the type of our uh, state, right? Whenever we are going to be using the state inside of our app, we're going to be referring to the type, right? So I'll say export type root state. So what is this root state? It's basically going to be the type of our current state. 
right so our state is store dot get state we can get our state by using this get state function right here so to get the type of this i'll say type of and whatever the return type of this function is i'll just use angle brackets and i'll say return type something like this let's just assign this store um, right here so i'll say const store equals configure store and in the end i'll just say export default store right one more thing that we need to export right here is the dispatch the type of the dispatch now i'll tell you what dispatch is don't worry about it right now app dispatch is i'll say type of store dot dispatch so dispatch is basically a function which will allow us to trigger the actions from our state so you can see dispatch is an action it is the only way to trigger a state change just like i showed you right here we were dispatching this add habit function right so we were using this dispatch function right here you will see along the way so let's go back to our app.tsx and over here instead of this div i'll have a container which will come from material ui so from at material ui slash material and the max width is going to be medium so md and again if you don't want to use uh, something like uh, material ui over here it's completely fine you can you know create your application in your way this doesn't really matter over here and i will use something called as typography so it's basically a component which comes from material ui which helps us to style our texts and i'll say habit tracker over here let's go back and see okay i'll make it a h1 so component h1 variant to be h2 and i'll align it to center just like this great this looks good let's first work on the habit form the form which will be used for adding the habits so i'll create a new component right here add dash habit dash form dot tsx over here i'll say r a f c e it will create a new component i'll call it add habit form and this will be a react dot functional component okay now i have obviously we have already seen we will have two states over here one is going to be for our name and other is going to be for our frequency so i'll just add two use states over here one for adding our name which will be of type string so i'll just say string right over here and other is going to be our frequency which can either be daily or weekly right so that's what i have added as a type over here and by default it will be daily selected let's create a form here inside of this form we will have a box component which will again come from material ui and this has this sx property which is used for adding the styles so if you see over here the system props that allows defining system overrides as well as additional css styles right so inside of this sx we can write our styles like for example display flex flex direction be column and gap to be two between them right and all of these things again is not related to redux so you can use whatever you like now inside of this i'm going to be using a text input and from material ui there comes a text field component which will help us to do this it will have a label of habit name for the value i'll provide this name right over here and on change we will set this name by doing e dot target dot value pretty standard stuff i'll say placeholder is going to be enter habit name and it will be full width great so let's just take this uh, add habit form and uh, provide it to our app.jsx so i'll say add habit form and import it just like this let's see now yep that is exactly what we wanted let's create another one for our frequency so i'll say form control by the way if you want me to bring a complete material ui tutorial just let me know in the comments down below so this form control contains uh, our form inside the material ui let's put it full width and here i'll say input label so this is just like a normal label i'll say frequency and below this i'll add a select component from material ui so let's import it from material ui we'll give it a value which is going to be our state which is frequency on change we will set the frequency so i'll take the event and i'll say set frequency to be e dot target dot value and for this value i'll say it can be either daily or it can be weekly okay so this select will basically just contain two items which are menu item menu item component which will come from material ui so one is going to be daily another is going to be weekly let's see okay pretty straightforward and then at the bottom we will have a button component 
which will again come from material UI, which will say add habit. This will be of type submit variant will be contained. It has multiple different variant like contained, outline, ghost, etc. Color can be multiple things like primary, error, secondary. I'll just choose primary over here. And yeah, this looks good. So amazing. Let's go on and define our very first action for adding the habit inside of our Redux state and then displaying them. Right, so we will have a function right here, handle submit, which will take an event in the param and this will be of type react.form event. By default, I'll say e dot prevent default and take this function and in this form, I'll say on submit to be handle submit. Great. Now, when we click on this uh, add habit button, it should trigger an action called add habit or whatever you want to name it, right? So if you go back to this habit slice here in this add habit, it will provide us multiple things. It will give us the state which we are supposed to manipulate and the action. And you've already seen the action contains like type and payload. So it will be of type payload action, which will come from Redux toolkit. You don't need to, uh, you know, manually define it. And this payload action, we have to tell it what this will contain. So inside this angle brackets, we have to add a curly brace or the state. And I'll say name will be string and frequency will be daily or weekly, right? Inside of this function right here, I'm gonna create a new habit. So I'll say const new habit equals, now this new habit right here will follow this type that we have defined earlier, right? Let me just copy it up. Also, I'll just provide this habit type and over here I'll paste it so that we, we have some reference. So we have to first uh, define the ID. So what will be the ID? I'll just take something uh, very basic like date dot now to string. Obviously, in the real world scenario, you should use something like UUID to generate an ID for the name. We're already getting this from the action. So I'll say action dot payload. So you can see it gives us this suggestion dot frequency or name so this will be name for the frequency i'll just um, remove this and i'll say instead of name i'll say frequency also use comma instead of semicolons completed dates i'll put it as empty by default since this is the first time that we are creating it and created at i'll say new date dot to iso string i'll just put a comma here and yeah that looks good so i think uh, yeah this is the spelling mistake right here and cool let's just take this new habit and add it to our state so state dot habits dot push we will push this new habit right over here and what this has done as i told you earlier it created a copy of our state here we have added this to that copy and now what this will do it will replace it in a place of our original state right so cool, let's just go on and use this add habit uh, now inside of our form. So here in the add uh, handle submit, I'll say if the name dot trim, we have something inside of the name, then I'll dispatch a function right over here. So dispatch. Now, obviously this is not defined yet. So how do we define it? I'll say const dispatch equals, we have something called as use dispatch hook, which comes from React Redux. And this is very important to know. And this use dispatch will have the type of our apps dispatch. So app dispatch. And if you remember, we were exporting it from our store, right? This right here. So every dispatch has its unique type. So this is our apps dispatch function. So I'll say dispatch. And inside of this, I will trigger the add habit function, which will come from our store slash habit slice. And we will add a habit here of name and frequency. Great. And in the end, let's just uh, set the name to be empty. Okay. Let's see. Now, I'll show you how this uh, Redux toolkit is so much beneficial for us while uh, creating apps which contain Redux. So I'll just say read book and this will be daily. So now notice if I click on add habit, see it has shown us that it's it has triggered this habits slash add habit action over here. And now we can also see our current state of our application. So if I click on over here, you can see we have this state. If you go on to this diff tab, you can see what has changed. It has added this habit right here. So if I show you again, I'll say create video. Let's 
keep it weekly click on add habit you can see another action has been triggered if i click on this one you can see it shows us on the first key it has added this right here if i go on to our state you can see we have two items inside of our state now right so this is amazing it shows us exactly what is happening inside of our application and trust me this is so much helpful in bigger enterprise application where there are so many reducers and state it is very hard to track all of this thing so cool let's go on and render all of these habits right over here let's get a component here called habit list dot tsx and i'll show you how you can fetch all of these uh you know elements from our state i'll say r a f c e habit list this will be of type react dot functional component and now to fetch all of our habits inside of this component right here we will use something called as use selector hook which comes from react redux and again this use selector is different from for different applications depending on the state and if you remember we exported this root state over here right so this is what will be the type of our state right so inside this use selector we're supposed to fetch what state that we are getting so we have a callback over here we will take the state and i'll say state dot habit so our reducer was called habits right so this is what we will take over here inside the habits reducer we have habits array that we will be using now it gives us this uh, error because we haven't assigned the state so this root state right here let's import it from our store great now we can take the habits so habits is like this we could have also done this like if we we were not taking the habits over here we could have destructured and taken out the habits right here all right so instead of this div i'll just create a box just like we previously did which will contain display flex flex direction column etc right all of the previous stuff let's just import it from material ui and inside of this we will render all of our habits so i'll say habits dot map we will map through all of these habits let's take one single habit over here and i'll say return and we will uh, use another type of container from material ui called paper again if you want you can use div over here as well so since we are doing map i'll just say key equals um, habit dot id i'll say elevation so basically adding elevation will add some shadow beneath that particular container or this paper right so elevation to and some styles using this sx prop that i showed you earlier padding off okay now inside of this we will create a grid so if i show you the grid in material ui so right here in the components inside of the layout we have this grid now it shows deprecated but don't worry we are not learning material ui over here right so even if it's deprecated it will still work so grids work something like this right we have created a grid component inside this we can create multiple different grids and according to their spacing we can provide like it has 8 and it has 4 so each and every line contains 12 sections and if we provide 8 so it will take 8 sections and this will take 4 sections and similarly it has taken 4 and it has taken 8 right something like this so here inside this i'll create a grid which will be container align the items to the center and inside this grid i'll create another grid for a particular item then that is this is this one is going to be for our name and frequency for rendering our name we will use this typography again from material ui variant will be h6 it will render our habit dot name and for rendering our frequency i'll simply say habit dot frequency inside this typography right let's just um, try to render this so i'll just go on and add our habit list right here just like this and let's go back to our app okay this looks good let's make this uh, the first letter as capital so i'll just say sx text transform to be capitalized okay this looks good now we will create another grid for rendering those buttons if you remember mark complete and you know remove uh, habit etc and i'll say for the extra small screens it will take 12 boxes for smaller screens it will take 6 boxes it will have a box inside of it and this will render two buttons right so first button will be for if this is completed or not right so by default it will say mark complete let's import this button and see yep mark complete it will have the variant of outline and we will add a logic over here so we have this completed dates array inside of our state right so what i'll say i'll say if the habit dot completed dates 
dot includes today. So if it includes the today, and obviously I haven't defined this today variable, which I'll do very soon. So if it includes today, it will show success color, else it will show primary color. So this will be green and this will be, I guess, blue color, right? So, so to, this today is basically going to be something like this. So today equals new date dot two ISO string, and we will split it from the T. So I'll show you what this is. So if I just copy it, go to console. If you split it from T, you'll get the date separate and the time separate, right? So this is what we need, the zeroth index. So we will get this date and we can check if this date is a part of this um, completed dates array. Now we haven't added the logic for, you know, marking this as complete, but we will be adding that next. And we can also add a prop over here called start, oops, start icon. And we can provide the icon for check circle icon. And this will be imported from material UI icons that we installed. So MUI slash icons material slash check circle. So let's go back and see. Let's try to add a habit, read book, add habit. Yep, you can see, perfect. Let's add the remove button over here as well. So below this button, I'll say button variant outline color error and start icon is going to be delete icon let's uh, have this delete icon over here as well so delete icon and this will come from delete just like this okay let's see how this looks great this looks good let's style this a little bit also one more thing we will say if this is already completed then it will show complete right so the same logic that we have used right here i'll just say if the habit dot completed date dot includes today, I will show completed else I'll show mark complete. Okay. By the way, this grid over here as well will have the same props in the extra small. It will take the full container and the smaller screen it will take the half container. So yeah, like this. Now it looks better. All right. Now next let's go on and add the logic for marking this as complete, right? That is toggling our to do's. So I'll go right over here in the habit dash slice. And I'll create a toggle habit function. It will take both of these two things, but instead of this name of frequency, we will have our date over here, right? So I'll say ID string and date string. ID for checking which particular habit that we are supposed to manipulate and date where uh, that particular habit was toggled. So first of all, simply I'm going to find that habit, right? So I'll say state dot habits dot find. And I'll take each and every habit. I'll say habit dot ID if it's equal to this action dot payload dot ID, right? If it's equal to that, then obviously we have found our ID. First of all, I'll check if habit is found. I'll see if this is already completed, right? If, if it's marked as complete, then we will mark it as incomplete. If it's incomplete, then we will mark it as complete, right? So for that, we will need this uh, index variable. We will where we will be checking habit dot completed date dot index of. So basically this index of checks the index of that particular date. So if it's already inside of it, then it will return us an index else it will return us minus one. So I'll say if the index is more than minus one, then it is already inside there. So I'll say habit dot completed dates dot splice. And the splice function over here removes an element from an array from a particular index. So it basically takes a start where you're supposed to remove or add something right and how many items that you're supposed to remove right so inside this splice i'll provide the index and i'll say one item remove one item from that particular index else i'll say habit dot completed dates dot push and i'll say action dot payload dot date we will push our date right over here amazing Let's go on and use this toggle habit. Make sure to export it right over here. So here inside of our habit list, um, yeah, over here, I'll say on click. We will use the dispatch function, right? But before that, we would need that dispatch function. So I'll say use dispatch hook, just like we used it earlier over here in the add form. Let's just copy it and paste it over here. So we will use this dispatch, uh, import this app dispatch over here. And right here on click, I'll say, function and I'll say dispatch and toggle habit. So toggle habit that we have created, let's import it and we will provide it the ID of that particular habit and the date that is today, right? So, so let's just go on and add a habit. Okay, we can see add habit. If I click on mark complete, yep, we can see this function over here as well. 
and if I go down over here you can see in the completed dates we have added this particular date if you go to this diff over here you will see the difference between the state that that is this particular key has been changed so this is super helpful for us now if you liked what we have created up until this point hit that like button right now because next we are going to be discussing the asynchronous operation in redux right but before that i have a assignment for you i want you to create this remove habit logic over here just create a go to over here in the habit slice create a remove habit function remove habit something like this and try to add the logic for removing the habit it's going to be very very simple and just let me know in the comments down below how you added this logic also one more thing when we are completing a particular habit over here we should show the streak progress right how many days it has been since that habit was completed the progress so if i go over on over here in the habit list so right here i'll be creating a function which will help us get our streak so i'll say const get streak and it will take a particular habit so i'll say habit which will it will be of type habit and we will import it from our store if you remember we have created this habit interface so inside of this function i'll say let streak to be zero and we will be manipulating this uh, particular variable for getting our street so const current date will be new date now we will run a while loop over here so while it is true this loop will run until we break this loop right so i'll show you how we're going to do that so i'll first of all check if habit dot completed dates dot includes if it includes today's date so and actually before this i'll have this date string variable which will contain the current date so basically we will start from today the current date and we will check if it includes it then great we will add this add plus one to the streak and remove the day by minus one right just to check if the user is on the current streak and they have not broken any streak right so i'll say streak plus plus and after this i'll say current date dot set date to be current date dot get date minus one so basically this will reduce the day by one and we will check the previous day right so just to uh, validate our streak and after that we will return our streak but if this is not the case if this does not include this particular date then we will say else break right then we will break out of this loop and great we will uh, use this uh, function right over here so let's go on over here below this grid I'll have this box right over here which contains this typography which will say current streak is going to be get streak and I will provide this habit and I'll say these many days so let's see yeah current streak is going to be zero date if I click on mark complete it's going to be one day let's show a linear progress component over here so this linear progress component comes from material UI so linear progress variant will be determinate and the value will be we will calculate the percentage with respect to the month so i'll say get streak we will get the streak for a particular habit divide by 30 into 100 so then we will get the percentage and let's just have a style of margin top to be one let's see yep this looks good if i remove it it removes the uh, progress as well if i click on it again you can see it has filled it by one day amazing great so now how do we go on and fetch any api inside of our application right let's say if we had to fetch any data let's say if we had to get the habits data from a particular api right so i'll go back to my habit slice.ts and if you have used the older way of writing redux you might remember something called as redux thunk middleware right so that redux thunk middleware now comes right out of the box of redux toolkit so we don't have to do anything separate right so let me show you above this create slice i'll create a function called fetch habits now you might be confused why are we creating this function outside of it i'll show you so here i'll say create async thunk so this is that thunk middleware that comes from redux toolkit which earlier we needed to install uh, as a separate middleware right so now inside this create async thunk we need to define what is going to be the name of this particular reducer or uh, sorry the action right so for example over here we have this add habit right but we cannot define this fetch habits over here so i'll just say habits slash fetch habits and it's same as writing it right over here 
it will consider it as a part of this habits slice. So now after this, we can provide it a callback and an async callback. So I'll say async over here inside this, we can perform multiple different actions. Like let's say, let's simulate an API call over here. Let me just bring in a code. So you can use any real API over here as well, right? It's, it depends on you. So I've just created a timeout of one second over here by doing await new promise of one second. I have some mock habits data over here and I'm simply returning it, right? Just nothing very special going on over here, just a simulation of an API call. So now we've created this fetch habits over here, right? Since we're making an API call, we need to show loading as well while the API is uh, being called. Uh, we need to show some error as well if the API is failed, right? So inside of our initial state, uh, first of all, inside of this type, we will add is loading, which will be Boolean by default and the error, which will be string or null. And here in the initial state, I'll say is loading to be false and error to be null. Okay. Now, how do we do this? How do we change this initial state? Should we write a separate action for this and, you know, manipulate the state dot is loading equals something, something, right? No, instead of that, we have something called as extra reducers over here, right? So right below this, right outside of this reducers key, we have something called extra reducers. And you can see over here, a callback that receives a builder object that defines case reducers via call to, you know, builder dot add case. And it can add a particular case for any asynchronous uh, operation or synchronous operation as well, right? Like for example, if I click on this uh, extra reducers, this will have a callback and this callback will take a builder. Now we can do variety of different things with it. So if I say builder dot add case, right? So here we can add a particular case if something happens, right? So in this case, whenever we are fetching our uh, habits, there's going to be multiple different cases. Like for example, a promise can be pending. It can be fulfilled or it can be rejected, right? So we, we will handle all of these three cases. First of all, I'll say fetch habits dot pending. And if I just show you, you can see it has multiple different things over here, like length, name, pending, prototype, rejected, settled, etc. Right. So first of all, for pending, I'll have the state and I'll simply say is loading state dot is loading to be true. Whenever it is pending, the loading state will be true. Then we will chain another case. So I'll say add case. This time it will be fetch habits dot fulfilled. And in this uh, callback, I'm going to say is loading to be false and state dot habits will be replaced by whatever we're getting inside of this payload. So obviously we're going to be getting this from over here, state comma action. And this will automatically be handled by Redux behind the scenes. And the third one, let's just quickly add it for our error. So in, the, in case fetch habits dot rejected, I'll take both of these things and I'll say is loading to be false and state dot error, the error, um, if you remember this uh, key that we've created right here, it will be action dot error dot message or fail to fetch habits, right? It makes our job super easy. Let's go on and fetch all of these habits. So here I'll just create a new component called habit dash stats dot JS dot TSX R A F C E habit stats colon react dot functional component. Okay. And right here, let's just uh, first of all import it inside of our application just like this here we will be showing all of the statistics of our application right so yeah okay and instead of this let's just um, take both of these use selector and dispatch let's import use selector use dispatch root state and app dispatch and apart from this habits we will be taking out is loading and error now right but first of all we have to fetch all of our uh, habits right so i'll say use effect import it from react and right inside of it whenever the component is rendered for the very first time i'll say dispatch and here i'll call fetch habits uh, i think uh, we have to export it from here as well i have not done that yeah export const fetch habits let's take this fetch habits and call it right here and now it should fetch the habits, fetch those habits by default. So if I just refresh it, you can see read and exercise fetch habits. First, it was pending, so it must have shown loading. So in see inside of the state, you can see is loading is true. Then is loading was false when it was fulfilled. 
amazing then we got all of the habits inside of it over here let's use this data and render our statistics for the application so we will have multiple different things over here let's just use the paper component again from material ui import it elevation is going to be two and some basic styling doesn't really matter we will add the typography for our habit statistics let's see yep we will show the total habits the completed habits and the longest streak of a particular habit right so again i'll have the typography over here and this will be a variant of body one this one will say total habits to be something we will have two more one for completed today how many habits were completed today and the longest streak okay this looks good but first of all whenever this is loading i want to show the loading indicator over here so i'll say if is loading if that is true i'll show the linear progress i'll say return linear oops linear progress and if it is error i'll return a typography component which will render our error right so if i refresh it okay we can see the uh, loading indicator over here great let's take these habits and write the logic for these first of all to get the total habits we just have to do you know habits dot length so i'll just say habits dot length over here completed today how many habits were completed today let's just write the logic for this const get completed today we will take the today's date and out of all of the habits we will filter whichever habits contain the today's date right so i'll say habits dot filter we will take each and every habit we will say habit dot completed dates dot includes if that particular habit has this uh, date as a part of the completed dates then obviously we will take the length of the final array right so then we will get the completed today so get completed today and third for the longest streak so for this one i'll just bring in the logic that we have earlier uh, written over here for get streak so let's just paste it over here and to get the longest streak i'll create a function const get longest streak inside of this simply i'll say return math dot max amongst all of the you know habits whichever streak is the longest one so i'll say dot 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 habits dot map and i will provide the get streak so it will provide uh, each and every habit to this get streak function and then we will have all of the streaks for all the habits right then we will say match dot max and calculate all of the streaks and then i will say zero that is minimum value is going to be zero if if uh, nothing re is returned to us so let's just uh, say get longest streak and let's see if this is working okay total habits today if i click on mark complete completed today one longest streak one if i do this again completed today two amazing so you have created your own habit tracker application now you can make some improvement to this like probably persisting these habits in the local storage or creating some real api and integrating inside of this app but that is obviously out of scope for this particular video and now you have learned how to use redux effectively i would recommend try to go and make more projects on redux and if you're preparing for interviews definitely go and check out my interview preparation course where you can you know find more interview questions on redux and a complete shopping cart app which i've converted in redux